What's up, everybody? Ryan Thomas here, live on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast Thursday, bringing you another edition as, you know, yesterday I usually air the show um, Wednesdays and Sundays. Uh, we did the post-game show, obviously. We, we all went through that. You guys tuned in. You know, I had over, you know, upwards of 4,000 views for that post-game show on Facebook. So I really appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, listening to my thoughts, watching you know, my thoughts, that was a uh, visual edition of the podcast on Facebook, Facebook Live. Um, I like to bounce around. I like to go from Facebook Live to YouTube where, you know, the camera's on me or audio. And I got to say that um, the audio ones have been coming more often than not. I just haven't had the timing to get everything firing, you know, on all cylinders and stuff like that. Uh, audio is a little bit easier for me to, um, to create, I would say, for sure. But the downside is the streaming side of things in which I, I use the audio is, is Spreaker and I only have a 15 minute, you know, time limit. But I also like that because it allows me to break the show up into certain parts and people can kind of listen to what they want to listen to. So that's that. So today, being that today is uh, Thursday, this is basically part two of yesterday's show. Last night, I joined the boys on the My Fantasy podcast, Brandon Reed and Dan Schalk, to discuss plenty of fantasy football news, plenty, plenty of fantasy football information in that show, as well as my thoughts on the Bills' current um, situation. And along the way, you know, I, I started to have other thoughts that I knew I would have. You know, the, the, my first original thought in the last audio edition of the Thomas Take Sports Podcast, there, there was more to say there, but I just didn't have the time to put it together. So here it is. Buffalo Bills fans uh, around the country related that the Josh Allen era is, is starting. Buffalo Bills fans around the country were thrilled that you know the the bills were smart enough to realize that hey this kid is the the present and the future as i have referred to him many many times um Josh Allen was a quarterback that i really liked in this year's draft there there's that's no secret um at one point i had him as my number 1 ultimately he was my number 2 quarterback heading into this draft and uh i had him rated over Mayfield i had him rated over Rosen um, but I had Sam Darnold as the number one, and I, I think that you know my opinion is this: as far as the outlook in the quarterback class, I think that Sam Darnold and, and Josh uh, Allen are the two quarterbacks that have the highest upside of any in this class. Um, Mayfield, you know, obviously he, he didn't take the job from Tyrod Taylor, which I think is a little bit uh, concerning. Um, you know, given that everybody knows my thoughts on Tyrod, I think he's probably one of the worst starting quarterbacks in this league. Um, and then you look at Josh Rosen not being able to take the job from Sam Bradford or maybe the Arizona Cardinals wanted to nurse him along. I don't know, but I, I would like to think that if I'm taking a quarterback in the top 10, um, I, w I would think he would be, you know, a, a better bet than Sam Bradford. Um, Sam Bradford could slip on a banana peel at one point, and, and, and that's all she wrote. So, you know, obviously I'm over-exaggerating there, but you get the point. The guy's extremely injury-prone. And I think that with Josh Allen being thrown in here week two of his rookie year, you know, really got the garbage time opportunity week one against the Ravens, Buffalo Bills fans... I love these Buffalo Bills fans, but if there's one thing I've learned along the way with this podcast and with communicating with Buffalo Bills fans around the country is that Bills fans are very impatient, and I get it. You know, the Bills haven't really given us a whole lot to cheer about these last, you know, 17, 18 years. Um, we've come so close to winning Super Bowls in the heyday of the franchise that, you know, there, there's fans of that generation that, that they got to witness that. They got to feel that angst, that that sorrow from those from those Super Bowl losses. I, I get it, but this is now. That was then. This is now. And if Josh Allen steps in Week Two against the Ravens, there's a reason for that. Uh, Nate Peterman was not the guy. Was not a guy to be a stopgap starter. Was not a guy to um, rely on. Unfortunately. And to say that he is still the backup is is also scary 
for the fact that if Josh Allen goes goes out there, which he will this Sunday, and he'll be playing against a tough front seven, and in, in terms of the LA Chargers, the week two opponent, you know, Allen is is going to face some some pass rush. That's for sure. I don't know if Joey Bose is playing, but I know Melvin Ingram is. So there's a lot to to really wonder there as far as whether or not Josh Allen could get hurt. He he could easily get hurt. Any player at any point could get hurt. To know that that Nate Peterman is the backup is a little bit concerning. I thought that the Bills should have picked up a veteran, even though they traded A.J. McCarron. I thought they were going to replace him with another third quarterback, but they did not, and the options out there in the free agent market currently are very slim. So Josh Allen's back is is really against the wall in this, and this is the last way I really wanted him to get his first start. You'd like it to be in a, in a great situation. He's got great receivers, great running backs, but that's not the case. The Bills have one of the weaker wide receiver cores. Um, really, Nate Peterman was terrible uh, last Sunday, but but was even worse was the fact that the wide receiving core of the Buffalo Bills was unable to get separation even when Nate Peterman did have time, which was very limited. But even when Nate Peterman had time, you go back, you do a wide view of that game, you watch that game from a different view, which that's available online, you know, from a wider Madden type view. Um, the Buffalo Bills wide receivers were very unable to get separation. Guys like Kelvin Benjamin uh, just looked flat out slow out there. So that's something that you know Josh Allen is going to experience next week if that's if they're this upcoming week if if that is not fixed which it's very tough to fix that in a span of a week um, that that is just a fundamental players not being able to separate they just don't have the ability um, for a guy as tall as Calvin Benjamin you know that there's there's a there's a fact that you know there's been some um, physique question marks thrown at Kelvin Benjamin the last couple years, whether he was in Carolina or Buffalo, there's been questions about his work ethic. So much the fact that Zay Jones's mom tweeted out about Kelvin Benjamin, which I think was completely inappropriate um, and caused a little bit of a, uh, a schism, if you will, uh, in the locker room uh, between Benjamin and Zay Jones. Zay Jones formally apologized to Kelvin Benjamin today um, and informally apologized to Benjamin today via Twitter uh, so that the fans and that the media and everybody would know that you know they, they squashed the issue. But this is the last type of thing that uh, the Buffalo Bills need right now. They need to be focused to put out a better performance, win, lose, or yes, tie as the uh, Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers did last week. Um, there has to be a form of unity on this team to bounce back from a terrible game. All three phases of the game were terrible. The special teams looked terrible uh, on, in terms of punt coverage, kick return coverage. Uh, the punter fumbled a, a, a snap. Um, the defense looked lost. The offense didn't get a first down until you know late in the second half. So th- that was one of the worst uh, week one performances I've ever seen, let alone week anything, um, you know, week five, week six, week seven, regardless of the week, that was probably one of the worst performances I've ever seen from any football team. And what what really sucks about it is I'm not really that high on the Baltimore Ravens. I, I don't think the Ravens are these world beaters that, that'll shellac teams 47-3 to three every single week. Um, that was a game last week, last Sunday, that that got ahead of the Buffalo Bills, got away from the Buffalo Bills um, due to the fact that they are, were just that bad. I don't think it was that the Ravens are that good. It was just that the Bills were that bad. Um, so Josh Allen, you know, if, if things don't go according to plan for him, which I don't think they will successfully, he gives the Bills the best chance to win. But despite that, in spite of all the things I love about Josh Allen, I think if Josh Allen had... I put it to you this way. I think if Josh Allen had, you know, let's just say we, we trade Josh Allen for Jared Goff. Josh Allen for Goff. You, you put Goff in Buffalo. You put Josh Allen in L.A. I, I think Josh Allen does even better than Jared Goff would with, with that talent around him. Um, you put Josh Allen in, let's say, Oakland. Um, 
I think he would do just as good as Derek Carr. You put Josh Allen in Philly, I think he'd do just as good as Carson Wentz. That's how high I am on this player, on this on this young man, to go out and do the job that the fans have, have wanted to see for the last 15 to, to 18 years. True week-in, week-out franchise quarterback, but i got to say you know, that there's been three quarterbacks that the Bills have drafted in the first round the last uh, 14 years, 15 years. J.P. Lossman, uh, E.J. Manuel, and Josh Allen, and all three of those guys have one thing in common. They were all thrown into the starting role in terrible supporting cast situations and i want the bills fans to know that you know if things don't go according to plan do not label josh allen a bust because he's not this team itself is very bad the team itself is in a massive state of transition the offensive line is in massive flux the running back position is in the state of transition as well there won't be many years left with the sean mccoy number 25 cut on a dime uh 25 in the backfield There won't be many years left with guys like Lorenzo Alexander and Kyle Williams on the defensive side of the ball. This team is going to be very different for the next few years. These drafts are so, so important. And realistically, the Bills fans have to think of it this way. We have one bad season, which is probably going to be this year. We have that one bad season to where we can get some draft picks that are, that are great draft picks, draft some great players. That speeds up the process that Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean have, have thought out. Um, and it also allows them to, in 2019, spend more money, being that they have $53 million in dead cap space. I've talked about that point in the last podcast, but I don't really think people understand how much that has "Quote unquote," handicapped the Buffalo Bills um, from from making even a, a, a dent in their roster. Uh, you really look at this team; it's it's it does not really fit in terms of the offensive players that are great, the defensive players that are great. There's a lot of players that are just mixed and matched, thrown in there. Guys like Lorenzo Alexander, if you put him on another team, would he be as would it be held in as higher regard? Um, I don't know. And that was a point that was mentioned to me by by Samuel White. I'll, I'll give him the credit for that. He stated, you know, you, you look at Lorenzo Alexander. Would he be a household name? And I, I don't think he would be if if we're putting him on another team. If we're talking about him in terms of on, an, on another team, um, guys like Kyle Williams, you know, they're rotational defensive linemen. He's on his last legs. The players that I envision being here a long time, guys like Josh Allen, guys like Harrison Phillips, um, guys like Trey Edmonds, who. They've really thrown him into the line of fire, and people have really gone after him via social media saying that they wonder if he's legit. No player is really going to look truly legit on this particular team due to the fact that this team is, is not is not at its full strength. This is not the, the final product. Um I'd offer an analogy, but I I can't even think of one right now without botching it. So it, it's not a final product. It's I'd consider it, you know, if like Da Vinci or, or Van Gogh uh, painted a, 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 a painting, if they if they did Starry Night or the Mona Lisa, and they and they they thought it was really really good, and then people said, well, the the mouth looks funny. Well, it's not fully finished yet. You know, it's it's like asking someone, hey, check this out, and they judge it, they throw it, you know, throw it to the curb, and you say, well, it's not fully done yet. That's how I look at the current Buffalo Bills. My analogies on this show are wild, crazy, and some of them make no sense, but that's the best analogy that I can come up with is that you show someone something, and you show someone a painting that you or a drawing that you that you made, and it's not fully done yet. Maybe not everything's colored in, and everybody says, "Well, that doesn't look good." Well, it doesn't have colors on it. It, it doesn't. It's not all colored in, and that's how I look at the Buffalo Bills. I look at the Bills as a as a drawing that is not fully colored in yet. Um, and as time passes with this. 2019 NFL draft, 2020 NFL draft, the salary cap situation improved. Brandon Bean hasn't really been able to make his fingerprints uh, or put his imprint on this team yet. 
outside of Josh Allen and Tremaine Edmonds and Harrison Phillips. That's three players.